sorry about that. Hi, everyone. Um, let me, uh, before we start, let me introduce a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Wita. Uh, as you know, that I'm from Indonesia originally. And then now I'm, I'm been living in US for quite a years. Um, so, uh, but before that, thank you as well to the uh, Fairfax County uh, Public Library that invite me to join this event. So um, I think we are going to start right away. Um, so um, before I start the presentation, there is a first thing that you need to do before we start everything is actually taking your uh, equipment. I want to make sure that uh, everyone have uh, their fabrics. Okay, and you should have uh, at least uh, four fabrics. One is the like a little bit smaller. This is the muslin, regular muslin. And then two is the white cotton fabric. And the other one is quite different is the fabric with a little bit some design on it. So I hope everyone have that uh, those uh, fabric. And then the next thing is, I hope everyone have chanting on hand. And then the wooden hoop. And uh, of course, the most important is the soy wax. The soy wax, you can put it in the bowl with the aluminum, this one, or if you wanna put it the soy wax, melting wax in the microwave, you wanna put in the, of course, the microwave safe bowl. And then you should have um, the wooden stick. This is just to help to steal the color. And then you do have some colors. Uh, if you are wondering what type of color that you have, it's kind of like two separate one. If you see the blue, the yellow, white and red, that one is the all purpose color. And if you do have another color, which is kind of like green or not everyone have the same color, those three color is uh, the, the paint only for fabrics. So there's two kinds of colors. One is especially for fabric. The other one is all purpose. So when uh, everything is uh, on hand right now, oh, and uh, of course is the, uh, the dyes. You should have two colors of dyes. One is yellow and one is red. So before we start everything, now I want you to, this is the first thing that we need to do. So please raise uh, your hand or asking a question right away if I'm too fast or you need me to repeat uh, the, intro, uh, the instruction. Um, Oh, I think it may be, how many pieces like fabric actually, I forgot. Is it three pieces or two pieces for each one? Whatever you had put in, Vita, I have two in mine also, I'm not sure. How many fabrics uh, the, 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 that you have? I have one large and one small. Yeah, I have two large and one small. <laughs> I think I think it's about, supposed to be three, not four, I believe so. I mean, okay, okay, thank you. And so there's a comment, please slow down a little okay. bit. Absolutely, thank you. So yes, let me let me make sure you have one small fabric, okay? Like a muslin like this. Yes. And then you do have a white fabric, like a regular cotton, right? And then you have another fabric, which is white as well, uh, supposed to be have some uh, design on it like a little bit, is that correct? Right, okay. So, <clears throat> some have four, some have three. Oh, I'm sorry, I supposed to be like maybe minimum. We, we tell, I don't have any fabric with design though. Oh, I yeah. just have like, really? I just have like plain white. Okay. Yeah, no, I I the... so. same for me. I see, are you sure? Okay. Maybe I put it wrong, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I, I did that in purpose to give it uh, one fabric with the design, just to let you know, when you do batik, it doesn't have to be like, a, you know, the just uh, you can use the fabric as long as natural fabric, it 
if that there is some design on it, you can still do it. So if you want to make like a scarf, you know, you want to like, you know, like painting it, it doesn't have to be like, a, you know, without the design, you can adding, um, you know, you can use the fabric with the design already on it and then just add it more, um, you know, design with yourself. That's, that's just the purpose of it. Uh, so um, after everything check, let me start first with the melting wax because that's the, it requires sometimes. Let me share you. <clears throat> okay. There is two way. The first thing that you need to do to melt the wax, there is two ways actually. Uh, well, there is three ways. One is you do have a warmer, you can use it if you see me right here. Can you see me as well, holding this? Yes. Okay. So this one is, I do have it of course um, handy because I teach batik everywhere. This is like a, this is like a melting pot, uh, you know, like for wax usually. Uh, but since not everyone have this one. So first thing, the soy wax that you have it, this, you can put it in this one, okay, in the aluminum foil. And then, let me show you, you can do the double boil like that, right? You put it on the medium one and then you just put on top of it until it melts. And it take about maybe 10 to 15 minutes, it depends how much you, you put the soy, the soy wax. Uh, I don't really put too much. You can uh, save uh, the rest of the soy wax, soy wax for your next project. So I'm going to turn this one on. So I'm going to let it that one. If you want to put it in the microwave, please do so. Usually it takes about three to five minutes to melt the wax. However, you still need a boiling of water, you know, in the pot or in the pan like that, because the wax need to keep warm all the time. Uh, when you melt the wax, there is a few way, okay? Uh, how, well, there is a good question. How much wax um, you want it to be melted? Uh, I give you a lot of wax, that one, it's just for you, you know, not the whole thing. You can use just half of it. Half of the one that I gave it to you, just half of it. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. The rest, you can save it. So first step, you want to put in the microwave, please do so. It's a take about three to five minutes to melt it to wax. However, you still need a pot with the water, okay? Um, because once the, the wax melted in the, in the bowl, you have to put it in the hot water because while you're working, the wax has to be melted all the time. That's why we need the hot water underneath that. Okay, good question. I did a few times with my uh, bowl. It's actually when you put the hot water because this is, is not, uh, this is a soy wax. It's a very easy uh, to clean actually. So even you use that one, uh, if you have a bad pot, please do so use that one, absolutely. But if you don't have one, it's easy to clean as well. You just need to pour uh, a hot water on it, clean it. It should be, uh, you know, uh, okay with that should be back, but okay. Any other question? So are you going to pause while we go and melt the wax? Yes. So everyone, everyone uh, melt the wax already? Like and how long it's gonna take to melt, uh, melt the wax do, uh, on the stove? Well, for the stove that will broil like this, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes because I do medium, in the medium, uh, um, um, flame. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. So if everyone to start that one, I can go to the next step. Any other question about melting wax? 
think everyone's good. Okay. So I'm going to leave with that uh, wax on my stove because I put it on the medium flame and I let it uh, melt uh, and I already, um, um, you know, try it. It's about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to let that one melt it. In the meantime, I will uh, give a little bit presentation about batik and how to do batik. Do you think uh, everyone knows? Okay, so can we start right now? Yes. Okay. Now let me introduce a little bit about batik. Batik in Indonesia, um, like everyone probably knows, uh, batik is not only in Indonesia. There's a lot of other country have batik as well, but particularly uh, most of the people knows batik. It's actually from Indonesia because um, the UNESCO already giving us that, that batik uh, as an uh, intangible heritage uh, from Indonesia. Now, maybe everybody knows where Indonesia is. I'm not gonna go this one. So let's see, um, what is the word of batik? Everybody wondering what batik means. So batik is actually um, the integral part of the Japanese uh, art. As you know, Indonesia, it consists of thousands of islands. Um, and then Javanese Islands is one of the biggest island in Indonesia. And that's where the word of batik actually originally come from. The term of batik itself, it's widely uh, considered derived from the ancient Japanese word, which is say titi. What titi meaning, it's actually meticulously, because as you see, when you make batik in here, how meticulous these people, you know, to make this batik, okay? Um, and then, so drawing the batik, uh, it's already over centuries, okay? This craftsmanship technique is passed down through the generation. And usually not everyone can do batik a long time ago. Only certain people with the very good craftsmanship with the high skill as well, um, they only can do batik. So batik artisan is not easy as we are going to do right now. But today I'm going to show you how to make a simple batik. It's not like this. This is, is very, very, um, you know, uh, very intricate. That's a lot of a craftsmanship required over there. Um, the required, of course, uh, for the batik itself is the chanting. Chanting is the main thing, the main tools doing batik. So what the function of chanting is like a pen with the ink. But instead of ink, you put a wax on it, okay? That's how you draw it. So this chanting is like a pen with the ink. Instead of ink, you put the wax in it, the melted wax. Now, the next one is, that is a, I'm going to give you a little bit philosophy of batik itself. In Indonesia is so many batik patterns because we do have consist, Indonesian consists from the more than 17,000 island. Every area have their own pattern and the pattern itself has a meaning on it. Although, although I'm not gonna do one by one, this is the most popular one. The first one, we call it the Siddha Mukti. So every single wedding, of course, Japanese culture, in Japanese culture. The groom and the bride, it's usually, they wearing this type of batik, what we call it Sido Mukti. Okay. So the Sido Mukti, meaning it's, Sido means continuously. Mukti means prosperity or full of happiness. So if you see right here, there is like a diagonal you know, box in here, right? 
So this pattern inside of this box, it's usually like a house or maybe like um, wings, you know, for them to fly, you know, because then they do, you know, when they're married, they have to be able to spread their wings um, or sometimes it's anything in here is actually symbolized of um, things that they wanted to, you know, to do after they get married. So this Siddha Mukti only used for the wedding, only for the bride and the groom. Okay, the next pattern is what we call the Mega Mandung. So this pattern is famous actually from Chirabon. Chirabon is one of the city in West Java. Um, this actually influenced by the Chinese arrival. Okay, uh, when the first Chinese arrival in Chirabon, they bring this influence. Okay, which is in uh, Chinese belief, um, the cloud. So if you see the pattern, is like a cloud. Okay, it's symbolizing the word of free, um, or it could be uh, the greatness of God. Okay. Even in uh, in the Islam art, you know, in the 16th century, it's represented it represented the world. Now, the cloud pattern in here is very free and wild nature as well. So that is behind of the Mega Mendung. This is one of the popular batik pattern in Indonesia. The next the next pattern. This is, is the oldest one. So this is, is the pattern that I'm wearing right now, which is what we call it kawung. Kawung is from, if you see this, the fruit, I'm not sure in English, probably like a palm fruit, okay? Because uh, that's what I called in here, it's a palm fruit, okay? So kawung is a very, very old design, okay? Which is consisting of the intersecting circles, as you see right here. Right, um, and this is, is actually known in Java since at least the 13th, uh, the 13th century. So the design was originally was only for the Sultan and his family. So only for the royal family a long time ago. I'm not a royal family, but I'm wearing it right now. <laughs> so a long time ago, this is only for the royal family because the philosophy, it does, um, you know, uh, it's very deep. Uh, it's that let everyone know the kindness, okay, in the inner heart, just uh, um, to what you call it is to like the like the fruit in here, which is it's very soft inside, but it has a, a sweet uh, meat, and then despite its heart, the, sh the shell it's its heart, okay. So that's what it is, and then the four elliptical in here shape also reflect the idea of the structures of the universe, which is the element of earth, fire, air, and water. So that's the kaum. The next one, the popular one is parang. This pattern was believed to be inspired by, uh, by the mountain. It is part of the royal family, okay? Um, why it's a, it's like a slope basically because um, the mountain is actually where um, you know the royal family had to hide from the danger because Indonesia is very mountainous area okay so and then uh, the other thing the characteristic curve times of uh, uh, parang could also be translated as a wave in the sea symbolizing the power and the greatness of nature. And usually a long time ago when we were in war, these parang issue, they, they are going to wear this type of uh, batik because um, the legend emphasized that the supernatural power of the power uh, of the parang to bring victory in war and protection and healing of the sick. So that's what the parang is. Okay. Um, and someone said the melt, the wet is completely melt. Just leave it because as long as the hot water over there, it will keep melted. 
ด้วยสตูอีกเก็บเปาติงโอเค so the next one is let's uh, what is the art of batik itself so basically batik is the ancient method of color dyeing okay and as again most of the design originally from java indonesia it used to belong only for royalty and wealthy family okay with the high position but now everyone can wear batik and then originally the color of batik usually is only brown blue red or sometimes black because it's really uh, why is that because the color it's come from the uh, natural dyeing such as like a fruit so or maybe some leaves so that's why it's a very very um, you know it's not my choices so that's the traditional one nowadays batik wear for everyone is wearing batik as you see near all the presidents <laughs> you know at the time there is um, the conference in indonesia even the latest collection from dior christian dior right now they have batik they use batik as well so now batik becoming more popular for international Uh, I'm grateful for that, um, and they recognize this batik from Indonesia. It, this is it's the latest, the latest collection from Christian Dior. They use batik for one of uh, their design, and as you see in here, the women in Indonesia they wearing batik. Sometimes they wearing as a cloth, sometimes as a piece of, you know, a saru. Okay, that's what we usually traditional uh, for the women in Indonesia wearing the batik. The next one is so again, as you know, every design of the batik, every pattern has a sacred meanings. Okay, um, so that's why not everyone can wear. Let, let's say you, as you know, if you remember the sido mukti, or you find the sido mukti batik, and then you wearing it. People probably from Japanese. Hey, why are you wearing the sido mukti pattern? Because that's only for a uh, the groom or the bride. So you know. So that's that's why you need to understand sometimes when you buy um, you know a piece of uh, fabric, uh, batik fabric. So you might want to ask what design is this, so you know and understand. Even though, of course, now people are free to use it, but. As you know, if you're wearing that batik in Indonesia, people probably will look at you and then wondering why you are wearing that type of batik. So, in Indonesia, there is a few types of batik. First is the handwritten batik in here. The handwritten it it requires a lot of labor time, a craftsmanship, and being patient. What happened is, okay. What happened is, it's actually um, you know to do this batik because um, you know take a lot of time, so that's why it's quite expensive. Um, okay, the next one, this two more uh, couple slides of batik is the stamp, as you know that one. The next one is the digital or print batik, and now we start going to make batik, as you know. All the batik tools you do have it right now is tamping, wax, and the fabric, of course, the melting wax. So let's start to make batik. First, I'm going to do batik with the dye process. Okay, what you need to do? First, I'm going to use this small batik. If you can see this one in here, okay. What I need to do is actually. If you see the fabrics in here, let me close this first, and then let me go back again. Use this. You have this wooden wax. I mean the wooden hoop. Okay. You put the fabrics on top of it, of course, and you know how to use it, right, everyone? There you go. Okay. So, you see right here. I happen to make a pattern already. Now, this is the time for you to create the batik. 
you can you you can draw by the pencil first like what i do what i did right now in here it's really up to you okay the pattern it's up to you you can make a flower animals whatever do you want to do it's really up to you or if you don't want to use the pencil you can do right away with the wax it's really up to you okay but i like it to do this one so i know the pattern that i want to do so um do you want me to give like a two minutes to make a pattern first don't worry about this one the first fabric is really like um just only for you to try and error so you can have you can get the feeling of the next fabric any questions so far how did you put them in like the fabric and the silk? fabrics okay so the first you need to open these hoops right one is with the ring adjustment right here and the other one just the round hoop like this you put the fabric on top this round hoop like this okay and then you put the other hoop with the adjustment on top of it and you snap it okay thank you mm -hmm. If that's too hard, you can adjust it one, make it a little bit loose. You can just stay with this one. Okay. There you go. All right. So. Should we use the white cloth or the muslin? Use the muslin first. So you can get the feeling first. Use the cheapest fabric first. <laughs> Yes, the muslin first. Use the muslin first. Okay. Now, as you everybody have the wax melted, right? Don't forget to put the chanting all the time on the hot wax because the chanting needs to be quite warm as well or hot. Okay. Now, this one, you can put it like next to you because I'm happen, I happen to have this. Okay, this is a melted wax already in here. So, first thing, let me start how to use chanting. Oh, before that, I forgot, I'm sorry. Let everyone have the paper towel handy. Okay, please everyone have the paper towel. Yes. Okay. Uh, All right. So first, as you see the melted like that, let's uh, uh, melted wax. You scoop with the chanting. You scoop the wax. Okay, putting the all the wax inside of this. It's just like you put ink on the pan. Okay. Now, this is quite. You just have to be careful. It's hot, but don't worry. The soil wax is not going to burn your skin. Okay, before, okay, everyone ready with the chanting? Once you scoop the wet, melted wax into this chanting, okay, if you see the spout in here, you will see, right? As you see, it's the spout. This is the time when the paper towel come handy. You want to make sure there is no uh, uh wax around this because you don't want to ruin you know the drawing now once the melted wax inside of this because the spout you see that coming all did you see right here let me let me close it to you you see it's dripping right okay now how you prevent that dripping all the time first what you do is actually you do it like slanted like this so it's not going to drip a lot okay now, you see the drawing in here that I made? Don't do like this because this is the spout. You see the dripping is going to be all the time. So you make it like this. Okay. Then you just follow the pattern. First, I'm going to make sure. This one. You see right here? I just follow this pattern with the wax. And then I scoot it a little bit. And everyone do it, 
everyone see what I'm doing right now? See that? Okay. Did you see that one? Right. So, what does the wax? What the wax actually uh, does for this one? What I do, the wax will protect. Okay, protect the color that you want to preserve. So let me. So <laughs> as you see in here, the pattern that you want to protect, you covered with wax. So they will not receive the color. Okay. As you see right here, in here, if I put the wax, I make the cow in here, I put the wax in here, it means I want to, the cow color is white because when I dye it, I put it on the color, this will be the color, okay? So any questions so far? Again, one more time, let me show you how to do drawing with two. First, you scoop that one, okay? And then you make sure you wipe it in here. Okay, now to protect that, please slant it that one, make the spout like a little bit up. And then so you see one more time, I'm just following the pattern in here. There you go. And then if that's stuck a little bit, I slant it down a little bit the spout. Peter, yeah. you only do the outline. You don't color it. I mean, you don't put the wax inside the Now, pattern. it's really up to you. You want to put it inside. It means you protect that uh, fabric from coloring. You know what I mean? If you put the wax in here, when I do dyes, when I'm dyeing the, with the color, so this, what the one that you protect with wax, it means will stay the original color. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I can do that as well if you want. Like let's say this small one right here. In here, I want to do the whole thing in here. So I'm just going to do this. So it means I protect, I protect this, okay? The whole thing with wax. So it means I protect this, I'm gonna, or I want it to be white. Okay. So you're going to color it, color uh, inside the, the wax? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because when we put the dyes, okay, when we put the fabric to the, to the color, the one, the, so don't worry about it because we put wax on it. The one that we do, we put wax, it will protect it. It won't get any color at all. Okay. So in the meantime, if someone done with the, the drawing and then someone uh, is done with the uh, waxing, I'm actually uh, have a, let me show you this. You see right here, the bowl or the deep uh, plate, I'm going to put dice in it, which is um, I choose the yellow color in here.
I put the like maybe half of it. So right here. And since you do have a hot water a little bit from the wax, you can put it here. It's about maybe a half cup or yeah, it's about a half cup of hot water. So everyone, if that's ready to this one, let me know. So when it's done, you take it off from the wood, from the wooden hoop. Which dye? So there is two color. It's really up to you. You want to use yellow or the red one? If you want to use two color, you need to use the the, light, the lightest color first, which is yellow. I'm going to tell you how to do the second one. How much did you add it? Um, you can just put half of the color, the this like half of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you just put a half of uh, hot water. Okay, thank you. A half cup, sorry, half cup of hot water. But again, this actually, it's really up to you. The more you put the color, the deeper it will be. And then um, the more you immerse the fabric to the color, like let's say more than five minutes, it will be more darker as well, like more yellow. Okay. So we're using the colors in the plastic bags, not the, not the no. jars. No, the jars is the paint. Is the use the dry. This is okay. Dry. Yep, from the plastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Um. So we're doing the um. The reddish one that's in the little plastic bag, right? Yes. That is two. Should be come with two color, yellow and red. Okay. Okay, I uh, uh, use the yellow tip because it's the lightest color. I'm going to tell you why. But if you just want a one color, that's okay with it. Okay. Because I probably want to do two colors. If I wanted to, if I want to do multiple color, start with the lightest color first. Okay. And we should take our, our uh, fabric out okay. of the wooden thing. Yes, take out okay. the fabric from the wooden, and that's why this wooden, uh, this wood stick come handy. I just put these fabrics all the way, and let, let emerge that fabric for about at least two, three minutes, okay? And I'm ready with the peel of paper towel. As you see, even though it is a few minutes, that's already below. The longer you immerse this one to the to the dice, the dice, the, the Bolder color, the color will be more bold. Okay. Now, as you see, it's more closer right here. You see that there is a still white thing. That's the one that I covered with the wax. Okay, I put it this in the paper towel. So you um, dump it uh, for like two minutes or so? Minimum two or three minutes. The longer okay. you 
more color, it's going to be more darker, more yellowy. So this is the first simple batik. Any questions so far? <clears throat> so this is uh, how you do batik with just one color. Oh, good. That's nice. <laughs> All right. The next one, if you want to put another color, let's say, oh, you know what? I'm going to make another um, design. I want to preserve this yellow color, let's say. So of course, make sure it's dry first, but this is just to, um, you know, the instruction. Uh, for the next step, if you want to do the, the next color, the second color. After, let's pretend this is dry. The whole thing is dry already, okay? The wax still there, right? The, the wax that uh, cover for the white wine is still there. So I want to put some, let's say, there is some line in here left, right? Now, I want to do yellow, just only the one right here. What I do... It's actually, again, you put wax to protect the color that you want to preserve. The next one, what I do, if this is what, if this is really an optional and make sure this is have to dry completely, okay? This is just the instruction. I want to preserve this side yellow this side yellow, this side yellow, and this side yellow, this side yellow, whatever the, you know, the, uh, so anything that you want to protect the color, to preserve the color, you cover it with wax. So let's say this is dry. And then the next one, okay, I put everything in the next color, which is the darker color, red. But it's really up to you if you want to do that, uh, okay? So let's pretend this is already uh, dry. You preserve the color that you want it, whether it's yellow, okay, or white with the wax. Now, when you put it, in the red color, everything that uncover with wax will be red. The rest of it that you put wax on it will preserve the color. Any questions so far? Let me show you the original batik from Indonesia. Right here. As you see, the first one you see, okay, this is, is the, um, this is the picture of the bird, okay? The first one is actually, you see the brown one in here actually wax, okay? The design is the uh, peacock. And then the next one, I put red color on it, okay? And then after I dye it with the co red color, I put some wax to preserve the red color. You see right here, this, this is like a double wax already, okay? I preserve the red one. And then I put it on the black one. Right here. I dye it with the black color. 
Now, when I take off all the wax by putting on the boiling water or with the iron, this is what happened. You see that there is three color, red, black, and white. But and then I wanted to add it another color, which is brown, okay? So I preserved the color that I wanted to preserve, which is the red, the black, and the white. So one, once I put it in the dyes of the brown color, this is what happened at the end. You see it right here? So that's the step. So when you do batiking, when you want to do multiple color, actually you just repeating the steps. You, so the function of the wax to preserve the color that you wanted to preserve and then put the color and that's it. And you want to uh, put another color do it the same, you know, step. So the repetition, just like that. Any questions so far? But we have to wait for the fabric to dry completely, right? Yes. Well, the next step, of course, we have to wait for the fabric to be completely dry. So that's why the handwritten fabric, it's quite expensive because of the labor and it's quite, you know, need the craftsmanship, like the skill, yeah. Does anyone following me or any other question? Want me to repeat something? So it's the same steps where they do um, printing by drawing by hand or with the stamp stand. It's the same process. Uh, for the for the. Printing, of course, is different. It's machinery, so they just, they just do by itself, which is um, not, it's different. For the stamp, yes, it's actually the step is the same, like uh, hand, uh, um, handwritten. However, uh, the stamp is more faster because they use the stamp. Yes. Right? But repeating process, the same, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so now how you take the wax off? Let's say I just want to stay this color. I just want a yellow one, okay? I just want the yellow. Now, the way I remove the wax is actually, this is when the um, ironing come handy. So, I have my iron board here, okay? I have my iron board here, okay? Now, there is two ways to take this uh, um, wax off. First, you put it in the boiling water, or the easiest way, I just use this iron. I give you some papers, right? Something like this. It yes. is like, this is, is actually a scrap paper. You can use whatever the, you know, the paper that you're not, you, you, you're not really using it or, you know, it's going to be waste. So it doesn't have to be special paper, doesn't have to. What I need is just doing like a sandwich. You put the fabric in between this, in between this paper. Okay, and then when you put the iron on top of it, the wax will easily stick with the paper. I and got a little creative. I put Let's the see. yellow to the top and the red to the bottom. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's really your creativity. It's up to you, Abdul Now, you see that right there? Now, if you feel it, the wax is already off. It stick with the paper. So that's uh, why we need this paper to take the wax off by ironing it. Oh, so get the iron. iron. Instead of you just boiling the water and it's a hot water. Uh, and if you have kids, you wanna do art with the kids, this is the easiest way. 
I teach the uh, uh, elementary school in DC. You know, I work with the embassy adoption program. I teach like about quite a few schools how to do batik. And I use this item and they're very happy because it's so easy for them as well to use it, of course, um, with the system with the item. But they, when they do this, they be, they're very happy to see the result. And you see right here, the fabric is dry right away. And the wax is off in here. Okay, there's no more wax. Oh, um, you if you put the this on the fabric, trust me, the item is actually fine. I use this all the time. Uh, again, let me tell you about the soy wax. The soy wax is actually it's a very uh, easy to work with. The original wax in Indonesia, we don't use soy wax. We use the wax with paraffin, like a batik wax, like like this. Okay, now. This one is required a uh, boiling water to get off the wax. The soy wax, it's, uh, it's actually uh, very, it, it, first it's sustainable and it doesn't have any fume at all, it's safe. Um, so when you take this one with the iron, you know, when you clean it, the iron by, you know, just take, put it in the, some paper, just only let's say there is some wax kind of like, you know, stick in, the, um, in here, but I don't think so because it's hot. You just put it in the, paper, iron it, the wax should be stick with the paper instead of in, uh, in the iron. Okay, um, how do we get the pencil mark off our clothes? Well, that's the thing sometimes, you know, uh, you can just use uh, the eraser, this one. And I usually, when I do this one, it's not, doesn't really, I don't really put, you know, like put much attention to put the, you know, the pencil. It's actually, it's easy to take it off with just the eraser. What's the paper that we are using? Uh, it can be any paper, okay? Uh, it just, say it again? No, like even the normal paper, we can use it? Absolutely. Okay. I have, I have this white water paper. Yeah, it works as well, okay? So any, I just use the any paper that I don't use it at home, as long as there is no ink or anything. You know, you don't want to ruin the the pattern. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. One more question. Mm -hmm. We are doing this in the boiling water. How about the dye? The dye won't go. So. This, if you use these dyes, the, the, the dyes is especially for the fabric as well, okay? If you put it in the boiling water, it might uh, warn off a little bit of the color. So it might be uh, the color, it could be a little bit light, okay? So if you wanna do with the boiling water, you might wanna immerse the color of the dyes like quite a while, like maybe more than 10 minutes, 15 minutes if you want a bold color. Okay. Yeah. And then the color that the dyes that I use, it's actually, if you want to know, I use this one. This is very handy. You can get it anywhere, like Michael's, okay, or um, another like uh, fabrics, um, like Joanne's Fabrics store, okay. There is two types. There is no different. Uh, the different is just, well, there's a different, I'm sorry. The different is, this is the powder, which is um, cheaper, okay. Uh, it's about $2. But and then when you want to use this one, you have to use a hot water, okay, to mix the color. And if you want to know the measurement, it's actually, it says on the box in here. The next one, this is the liquid. The liquid does not require hot water to mix that. What you need is just the cold water. So you can get from the sink, okay. Um, and then there is uh, instruction as well in here. So this is the brand that I use for the dyes. This one is about maybe five to six dollars. It's more expensive, but because it's more easy to use than this one. If you want to use with the kids instead of a hot water, you can use this one. Just mix with the cold water. Yeah. Any other question? 
So do you want to do the next one? Everybody ready for the next uh, uh, batik, which is the batik painting? Okay. Now, the next one is actually, this is what I want to do, Sabine. It's actually the process what we are going to do the batik with the paint. The first process is by dyeing the product, which is the dyeing the fabric is actually is the, uh, the traditional way when we do batik. Now I'm going to show you how to do batik by painting it. Okay, so this is the result, the fabric that I do with dyes, okay. And I make a small pillow in here from uh, the fabric. And as you see, this is the fabric with the, um, you know, the pattern already on it. So it's quite nice, you know, it doesn't have to be just the regular white, it can be with some pattern on it, okay. And the next one, okay, here's the step, the batik painting. This is what I did. Again, the same step, steps. You use this one, you put the fabric that you want it to use. It's really up to you. You want with the pattern or you want just the polos one, the regular one. I'm actually going to use the one with the pattern so you can see the difference. Okay. So if you use the one with the pattern, you want to make sure you paint it on the, the not on the on not backward on the top of the pattern, okay? Because if you, you see carefully, you see it that where is the top, where is the bottom. Okay, but since not everyone has the pattern, maybe I'm gonna use just a regular one. Okay. Okay, so the first step, it just like when you do the uh, batik with uh, the, you know, the dyeing process, okay? You can you put this one and then make a pattern on it and do the same thing, just like with what you did with the first one. You trace this with the wax, or if you wanna cover this with the wax, it's really up to you. It's really up to your imagination, okay? Now, after you do waxing, the finishes, instead of the dyes, I'm just painting it. Now, how do we paint that one? Okay, so um, do you want me to do right away to painting or you want me to wait until you do some wax first? Any suggestion? You give us some time. Okay. 
there is any question, please let me know. Yeah, that is a good question. So um, yes, when you do the two dyes, the when uh, everything completely dry, so the second dye will everything like completely cover the first dye. It won't mix the colors. That's how the dyes work. That's why it's good if you put the first dyes is the lightest color. Then, mm. yep, so, yep.
um, like a small brass, not really too big because um, you know you want to be like like this type, a any kind of brass actually. You can use the hair, you know, the natural one or even the uh, you know the his synthetic you know brasses. One matter. Then you know, um, I think you may be, you might be able to use the Q-tip, yes. But the Q-tip probably the Q-tip probably it's absorb a lot of uh, you know water and color to the Q-tip itself. But you may try. Obviously, I never tried with the Q-tip. <laughs> Hey. So while you're still drawing, let me explain a little bit again about the color, okay? What you have, two types of, of color. The red one, yellow, blue, and white, this is, is the all-purpose color um this one you can you know it's really very inexpensive if you play with the kids you can use the washable color as well because you're not going to wash it with this one okay um so the first one again the type of color that the, the paint that i use is the red the yellow the blue and the white that one is the all-purpose or you can use the washable color if you want to play with the kids if you want to do the, uh, you know, art together with the kids. So with that one, when you want to do color, I put the, I, I give you three basic color. If you want a green, of course, you can mix the blue one with the yellow one. You want the orange color, red and yellow, maybe, you know, everyone can just try it, you know, when you want to mix the color, what color that you want in, okay? So since I want to do this one, let's say, and don't forget you should have water to wash your breasts, okay? So when, we, when I start the color, okay, just for, uh, to make sure we, not, we are not going to, uh, take the wax off with boiling water. Why? Because I use the all-purpose color or washable color, which is if you put it in the boiling water, it's all gone. When I, uh, the way I remove the wax with the painting, I only use iron, okay? So that's you need to know. When you wanna use the painting, you do not use the boiling water, okay? You only use iron to remove the wax. When you put color, it's really your imagination again, okay? You can do anything, okay? Um, let's say I wanna do, let's say red color in here, in the flower. I just put whatever in here inside of this flower, the petal. Um, because I'm not worried going like has to be exactly because there is a wax over there copper. So I just do this. Just when you do painting in the paper, it's the same thing exactly. Okay. Now, when I want to use, oh, you know what? On the top, I want to use a little bit lighter. The trick is when you want to put a little bit the lighter color, First, of course, you wash the brass and you put water on the fabric before you put the paint on it. See right there? And then after you put the water in here, then you put a little bit red, put it in here, that's, the color will be lighter than the bottom because I put water already in the fabric. In the bottom, it should be darker. Just like that.
and paper towel is really handy okay just like that if you want to put the lighter color okay you just put the water force on the fabric and you just put the color that you want it to any other color i mean any, any other question so far
now since I know everybody's busy like doing some stuff <laughs> painting it's 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 fun isn't it so the one that I told you about the one that I use right now is the all-purpose uh, paint which is the white the yellow the blue the red that you have right now those are all-purpose color or you can use like a washable color if you want to play with the kids doing the arts. Now, the other color, there is a three color, you should have it, and not everyone have the same color, uh, like a green or red, like separate with those uh, other than yellow, blue, red, and white. Those are the fabric paint. Um, what is the difference between the all-purpose and the fabric paint? So when you use the all-purpose color, of course, um, it's lighter, okay? And then um, it's, you cannot put it in the boiling water or you cannot wash it. Now, when you use the fabric paint, you actually can wash it after it's dry completely. After you paint it with the fabric paint, you have to, of course, iron it okay with the color upside down and that color will stay okay even though you wash it okay um, that should be stay on the fabric now let's say if you want to play with the white shirt the old white shirt sometimes you want to do that i do that problem sometimes you know with the white shirt the old one i paint it okay with the fabric paint okay there you go then you can wash it. The 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 draw the I mean the color it should be stay. So that's the difference between the fabric paint and the all-purpose color. However, uh, consider the price. The fabric paint it's a lot more expensive. It's like double or triple the the um, the price of the all-purpose color. So if you want to do art with the kids, just use with the regular all-purpose color. If you want to play, you know, for your own, you know, you can use the fabric paint. Any other question? So today I'm going, this is all purpose, but I'm going to put another color with the fabric paint. So it is for fun. You can absolutely absolutely mix it. Okay. You want to use the you want to try the fabric paint and what it looks like, please do so. Um, as you see right now, I'm done with the coloring in here. Okay. And now I'm going to put some other color, but I am going to use the uh, fabric paint. Sorry for disturbing. What's the other colors for the? It's almost gray and gold. Right, that one is actually the color for fabric. Okay, so um, I give you two different ones just to let you know there is so many colors out there. 
Um, there is one, the, you know, other than blue, red, and white, um, it's actually a yellow. Those are especially for fabric only, okay? Uh, which is when you put it in the fabric, even if you wash it, it will stay. That's the difference. The price is triple than the regular one. But the blue, red, the yellow, and white is the all purpose. You, you use it in here, but once uh, if you put it in the fabric, like a, if, like a cloth, let's say a, a, a shirt, uh, when you put it over there, then when you wash it, it might be, you know, the color won't, won't stay. So that's the difference. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Vita, there's a question. How do I save the leftover wax? Oh, you know, uh, good question. The wax, the leftover one, you just keep it as long as, um, you know, the wax still there. It won't get bad for the wax. So um, whenever you have leftover, okay, you just keep it, cover it, you know, so it won't, of course, let, let, um, let it cool first, okay? And then if you want to do it again, like doing batiking or play with the kit, you can reuse it until it finished. Don't throw it away. Always reuse it. You just put in the container or don't container, just leave it wherever, you know, I put it right there, just leave it over there. Okay, if you put in the pot, you melt it first and then you put it in some, uh, maybe um, some container that you can put it in the microwave next time, like, a, sorry, let me show you this, like you can put it right here because this is, is microwave safe as well, the leftover, even though it's melted already, it's still, you can just put it in microwave and then melt it again. I used to make a scarf from the silk. It's beautiful. You make it yourself. It's one of a kind. But it is better to use the natural fabric. Uh, why? It's because a lot of um, coloring, like the paint for fabric, it's usually good only for the natural fabric. However, if you want to use with, uh, let's say, the uh, like polyester fabric, there is a specific paint for that specific color and then sometimes it quite a little bit uh, different the way uh, you do like right now the treatment um you have to wash it first you have to do put some stuff like additional chemical on it you know to make sure the color will stay so that's the difference yeah. so the best if you want to try uh, batik in all shirt try with the cotton or silk of course Natural fabric is the best. Try to find the white shirt, the old one. You're probably boring with it. You paint it with it. Okay, it's it's going to come back to um you know alive that uh, make it different. <laughs> you put the dye on it, the whole thing, you know, and you paint it. So let me know if you do that, and you can send a picture. <laughs>
Vita, there's another question. After the paint dries, we can iron off the wax? Absolutely. Absolutely. After everything is dry, and the wax itself is really fast to dry. So that's why when after you finish the wax, you can right away do painting. The painting, the, the color that sometimes takes a while to dry it. But when the paint dry, you absolutely can irony. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit trick the next step. So again, if you want to do the fabric paint, it's basically it's the same. Now, as you see right here, I like this design, right? But and then what happened with this white? I don't like this white color. I want it to be like this to put the whole color on it, right? So how do I, you know, there is two way to do this one, to put the whole thing with color like this or like this, okay? First, it's really, if you want it, just continue with the brush, covering with all the color with brush, please do so. If you want to mix with the dye, I have some leftover dye right there, the yellow one, okay, or the red one. I'm going to do yellow probably. So what is the next step? How can we preserve this color? Again, that's where the wax come, you know, handy. So I use either with the chanting again, okay, like with this chanting, you cover all this color that you want to preserve after, of course, make sure it's dry, okay? With all wax, okay? The color that you want to preserve, which is the red, the orange, the green, okay? The pink right here. I want it to preserve it. I cover all of it with the wax. Now, um, since this is the big area, I can use brass as well for wax, it's easier, it's faster actually, when it comes to big area like this. So my color is a, it's quite dry right now, okay? You see right now? So I put my brush, again, any kind of brush, synthetics or uh, natural, synthetic is cheaper. If you wanna use with the wax, use the synthetic one, because the, hair, uh, the natural one is quite uh, pricey. Okay, I put the, you see right here, my brass with the wax and I cover my red one in here with the wax. So it won't get any color on top of this one. Okay, that is, that is the other step that you wanted to try. Or if you don't wanna do that, Ah, I just want to brush it all over with color. Please do so. Like what I do right now, I'm going to put everything maybe in yellow. I just brush it with yellow. That's it. It's really up to, it's really up to you, the technique that you want to use. Okay. Any questions so far for this uh, couple technique and the trick that I, was uh, presented to you, let me know. So again, you can just paint it all over with the color or if you, oh, I, I have a leftover of the dyes, I'm just gonna sip it. Then you need to cover this, all the color that you want to preserve with um, uh, wax. Let me know if there is a question.
So Vita, if there's any wax left, which is in the chanting, how do we clean that? Any wax left? Oh, you just put it on the, um, yeah, when you melt the wax, okay? You can just put it on the hot water. Uh, if you want to clean it, just put it on the hot water. It will easy. Okay. Thank you. As you see, I cover this color. I, will, I want to preserve because I want to dye it with some chanting. Thank you. So my last step, I put everything on the day after I cover all the color with the wax. The wax is dry already. So if you see right here now, after I put, uh, after I dice from the left over that one, this is what happened. There you go.
just like this. Okay, then after that, I'm going to iron it right away. Even though it's, you know, wet, but it's okay. Let's see right here. Okay. Right. Let me just do either this one. Vita, do you use medium heat or high heat? Um, I use a high heat. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. So when everyone finished, you can show it to me. There you go. That's really nice. I'm still waiting for my paint to dry. It's still wet, so I haven't dyed it. <laughs> uh, do you keep the uh, wet water or do you throw it out? What water? The red water, R I T. Oh, the dyes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the dyes is actually um, when I have leftover, I usually throw it away because it's uh, it's not really you know if you keep it, it just only for maybe a week or so because it's okay. that yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Vita. Right. Any other question, let me know. Yeah, you can uh, give you the extra fabric so you can use it, you know, at home. And as you see right here, this is the fabric with the design on it already before I put it. So, yeah. And just a reminder to everyone to return the, the chanting tool and the frame. Yes, please. Uh, and uh, just for you to know, my um, chanting, uh, actually, I take it all the way. I bring, uh, brought it all the way from Indonesia. <laughs> it's actually, if you want it, you can buy it uh, online. Okay. You can buy it online through the um, dharmatrading.com or you can just Google it where you can find chanting. Okay. It's about, I think, cost it's about uh, five to six dollars a piece. 